Okay, so here's a problem. A simple supported beam, roller at A, I'm sorry, a pin at A, roller at B, uh, five kip load at nine feet from A, and we want to find the slope and displacement at the midpoint. So we're going to use conjugate beam. So the first thing we need to do for conjugate beam is find the moment. So let's do that. To find the moment diagram, we will need our reactions. So I'm going to assume AX, sorry, AY and BY are acting up, and let's find those. So uh, I'm going to sum my moments at A using right-hand rule for my sign convention and make sure everything's in equilibrium. So summing moments about A, these five kip load creates what? Positive or negative moment? Negative. negative. So I have five kips times a moment arm of nine feet and then BY will create positive moment about A. So there's BY times a moment arm of 12 feet. So what is BY? Looks like 45 divided by 12. What is that? 3.75. 3.75? You guys get that? Yes. And then if I sum forces in the y direction, make sure they're in equilibrium, assuming up is positive, I have AY plus BY minus 5 kips is, should be in equilibrium. So that means that AY is 1.25 kips. Okay? So let's uh, make a little form here where I can draw my shear force and bending moment diagram. So I'll come down here and establish a positive x-axis, positive shear. All my units for shear will be in kips. So what is the shear force at A? It's 1.25 acting up. Is that positive shear or negative shear? Positive. positive. So I'm going to start off at 1.25. Oh, I need to include this... Uh, particular point something important is going to happen there now we know from our previous work that the change in shear I'm sorry the change in shear over this nine foot piece is the area under the load curve which is zero so I should stay at 1.25 we also know that the slope of my shear diagram is given by the value of the load which is zero so I have zero slope. So I'll have a horizontal line. As I pass underneath or pass from left to right on this five kip force, how does it affect my shear? It drops five. So 1.25 minus five brings me to 3.75. The change in shear over the last three feet is the area in the load curve, which is zero. So I stay minus 3.75 which matches my shear at B. And of course, then the slope of the shear diagram is the value of the load. The load is zero, so zero slope. So pretty simple kind of stepped shear diagram. Okay, so now it's time for our moment diagram. So I'll establish positive x-axis for that positive moment. All my units will be kip feet. Now, uh, what is the moment at A? Zero. Zero, so I, sh I should start at zero. And what's the moment at B? Zero. Also zero. So I have a starting and an ending point. Now remember, again, from our previous work, the change in moment between any two points is the area in the shear diagram. So let's use this area under the first nine feet. So what's the area of the shear diagram? Yeah. It's a rectangle, so it'll be 9 feet. What's 9 point one po times 
And then the slope of my shear diagram is given by the val- I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my moment diagram is given by the shear, and you see the shear is constant and positive. So here's a constant positive slope. The change in moment over the last three feet is the area under the shear diagram, which again is rectangular. So 3.75 times 3, I think that's negative 11.25. That brings me to zero. And what's the shape of this curve? Well, it's given by the value of the shear, and the shear is constant and negative. So there's a constant negative slope. So there's my moment diagram. Now, a couple weeks ago, we're done, right? But now we're not done. We're just getting started. So what do we do next? What's part two? I have to apply the moment divided by EI to my conjugate beam, right? So what does my conjugate beam look like? My support at A, external pin is, in the conjugate space, a pin. And my end roller is a roller. So that's not going to change. So I still have a pin, and I still have a roller. Except now on that conjugate beam, what am I going to apply? This load. So I like to just draw my moment diagram right on the beam. There's the shape. Now, this moment is all positive. So as load, what is what direction is positive load? Up or down? Up. So this load will be up. And it will have the value of 11.25 kip feet. That's my moment divided by EI. Now that's the problem I need to work. Now in this space, what do I need to know? I want the slope and displacement at the midpoint. Uh, the midpoint is 6 feet which would be right about here. Now remember, in the conjugate beam, when I find shear in the conjugate beam, what is that in the real beam? Slope. When I find moment in the conjugate beam, what is that in the real beam? Deflection. So I just need to find the internal shear force and bending moment at this cut. Now, do you want to work the left side or the right side? I think the left side has a clear advantage. So in doing that, I need to find the reaction at A. So I'll assume I have a reaction AY and a reaction BY. Okay? So I'm going to sum moments about B and find my AY reaction. I'm going to cut it here, draw a free body diagram on the left-hand side, and find the internal shear force and bending moment. Now to do that, I need to find the reaction at A, and to do that, I need to work with these triangular forces. So I'm going to come back and define those as force 1, and force 2. I'm going to sum moments at B, so I'm going to look at distances from B to F2 and distances from B to F1. And I'm going to um, kind of summarize those over here. So let's look at force 1. That would just be this part of the triangular distribution. So 1 half base, which is 9, times height. So what is 11? I'll just write that in. So that's 1 half base, which is 9 feet times my height, which is 11.25 kip feet divided by EI. So what is that? Someone with a calculator out there. 50.64. 6. 50.64? And that will now be kip feet squared divided by EI. 
What's the force to? 16.9. Oh, you're ahead of me, Mr. McDonald. Huh? So that's one half uh, the, the height, the base there is 3 feet times again 11.25 kip feet divided by EI. So what was that number now? 16.9. Anybody else getting this number? So there's my two force values. So now I can sum my moments about B. And don't, don't forget, the reason we're doing all this work is to find AY. And once I have AY, I'm going to cut the structure here and look at this left-hand side to find the internal shear force and bending moment. So let's sum moments about B. So both these forces, F1 and F2, are going to create positive or negative moment about B? Negative. negative. So let's start with F1. So I'll have minus 50.6 kip feet squared over EI. That's F1. And what's its moment arm from B? Well, it's, uh, from this end, it's going to be two-thirds the distance or two-thirds of three or two feet, right? And then now F2, oh, I did that wrong. Sorry, I got him backwards. So it should be, it should be um, one third from this point, which is three feet, plus three feet is six, right? I was doing F2. So let's do F2. So that again be negative 16.9 kip feet squared divided by EI. And that has the moment arm of two feet. So I've accounted for F2 and F1. Now AY is also negative. And what's its moment arm? 12. So let's solve for AY. I'm going to need your help for that. It's going to be negative. That part I know. Negative 28.1. So 28.1. And that will still be kip feet squared over EI. Everybody else get that? Confirmation from somebody? Yes? It's all right? All right, so now let's make our free body diagram of this section that we're going to cut, which will look something like this. So here's the chunk that I want. Now remember, I want the midpoint, so that's six feet. I'm going to put my value of AY on the structure, which is down equal to 28.1 kip feet squared over EI. I have my distributed load, which is my loading Okay, one thing we need to do now is what's this value? So I know that at 9 feet over, as you can see here, 9 feet, it's 11.25. What is it at 6 feet? So similar triangles will tell you that, right? 11.25 is to 9 as what is to 6? Two thirds. So what is 2 thirds of 11.25? Anybody? 7.5? So now this becomes 7.5, oops, 7.5 uh, kip feet over EI. That's the intensity of the load there. Here's my positive shear and my positive bending moment. Any questions about that? So now this triangular load, I need to make a concentrated equivalent force of. I'll just call that force three. Okay. Yes. Oh, I drew it the wrong way, didn't I? Okay, sorry, sorry, my fault. Shears down. Sorry. Good catch. I must be doing something right. You guys saw that. 
Maybe I should start leaving little traps like that throughout all these problems to see if you catch it. No, it's fine. No, it's okay? No, you know it's good. All right. So what is F3? It's triangle again, so the area of that is one half the base, which is six feet, and what's the height? 7.5 kip feet divided by EI. So what is that value? 22.5, and that's kip feet squared divided by EI. So I need to find these two values. I'll start uh, with the, the easiest one first. I'll sum forces in the y direction. Make sure it's equilibrium. So what do I have? Well, I have my shear force down. I have force V, uh, force 3 acting up. And then I have my reaction force acting down. 28.1 kip feet squared over EI. So you just need to put F3 here and solve for the shear. Negative 5.6. Anybody else get that? Mm -hmm. <coughs> negative 5.6. Mm -hmm. Okay, so negative 5.6 and this will be kip feet squared over EI. The negative means what? No, it means it's negative shear, right? But what does that mean when I map that back to the real beam and slope? That means the slope is negative. And we'll, we'll look at that in a second. I'll actually put in values for E and I in a second. We'll make a, a calculation. Uh, to finish this off, let's uh, sum the moments at our cut. So looking at the free body diagram, summing the moments, at the cut I have my moment M. F3 is going to create positive or negative moment about the cut? Negative. So that would be negative 22.5 kip feet squared over EI. That's the force. What's the moment arm from the cut to this point? It's from the big end, so that's one-third the distance. One-third of six is two feet. And then I have the reaction force, which creates positive moment. That'll be plus 28.1 kip feet squared over EI. And what's its moment arm? Six. This number is way bigger than that number, so it looks like the moment's going to be negative. Of what's the value? Negative 123.6. 123? Really? Okay. 123.6. And this is going to be kip feet cubed over EI. Now, what does the negative moment imply? Well, that means, remember, moment maps back to displacement. So negative means that the beam is going to deflect down, which seems reasonable to me, that it would deflect down. All right, let's finish this by actually making these calculations. So remember that the shear maps to the slope. In this case, our shear was negative... 5.6 kip feet squared over EI, which is negative 5.6 kip feet squared. And let's divide it by E and I. So E in this case is 30,000 kips per inch squared. And I is 800 inches to the fourth. So I need a conversion of what? I've got feet squared. I need everything in inches. So I know that one foot squared is how many inches squared? 
144, 12 squared. So now numerically, what is all that equal to? It's going to be a fairly small number. Um, 3.4 So how many zeros is that before the 3, 4? Uh, four zeros. Four zeros? You notice the units all cancel, so this uh, will be in radians. It's a pretty small angle, and it's negative. So what does that mean if I look back at my original beam? That means right here at the center, you would expect the beam to still be slightly angling down, negative slope. I think that makes sense, because probably just to the right of that, it's going to flatten out zero and then start back up positive. So what it's saying is that the maximum displacement probably occurs just to the right of the midpoint. Uh, the final one is that the moment maps over to the displacement. In this case, we got a value of, what is it, 125.6? No, 123.6. And this is KIPP feet cubed over EI. So let's see what that's going to be. One, two, three point six kip feet cubed. We've got some conversions to do. First, we still need to divide by E, 30,000 kips per inch squared. Divide by I, 800 inches to the fourth. But now I got a foot cubed to deal with. So one foot cubed is how many inches cubed? Yeah, that would be 12 cubed, which is 728. So what is all that? Negative 0 0.008899. 889. Let's just go 89. How about that? And that's inches. Not much displacement. We have the signs going in the right direction. Does it make sense that this beam only dis displaces nine thousandths of an inch? I think that's a reasonable thing. First of all, this beam is only 12 feet long, which is not very long. It only has 5,000 pounds on it. It's made of steel. It has a pretty healthy cross-sectional area, 800 inches to the fourth. That's a pretty, pretty good-sized beam. So I would say that... Uh, those values seem reasonable. Unless we made a calculation error along the way, I think that's a, a pretty good solution to our problem. So any questions about this? Mr. Church? Stop here. Oh, okay. All right. <clears throat>